Hello everyone and welcome back. Hello. Today's video is going to act as your cheat sheet to writing your partial scholarship essays for HMC specifically. I do want to preface this by saying that the tips and tricks and structures that I give you in this video might be applicable to assist Davis and other scholarship programs that offer that. However, I cannot assure that as I have not gone through the process for partial scholarships on those, you might need to tweak some things or make them specific to the program's requirement. I do believe that this is a pretty strong guide, so you know, use it as you please. Thank y'all. Let's get into it. First off, I wanted to address what the partial scholarship essay is. Now, why do we even need it? If you're selected for a partial HMC scholarship, you will be given a list that has a little bit of background information as well as a person, a staff member that is gonna be in correspondence with you in the process for getting picked for a school. You have to apply to about four slash five schools depending on the year. You will have a limited amount of time, I believe around a week to pick the schools, write an email where you motivate them to take you instead of somebody else, and then get an offer and confirm that offer. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now for the purposes of this video, we're going to divide the essay writing into a general and specific section. In the general section, we're gonna be writing about things that are personal to you and that you can copy and paste into each and every single essay. For the specific part, we're gonna be looking at each school's website and picking out information. We are going to be talking directly to the schools and telling them why we're a good fit for the school. First off, we are gonna to need to pick schools. Look at the school's websites, and make sure that everything aligns with your views and your needs for a school. This can include anything from subjects offered, facilities, sports, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Next up, watch YouTube. It is so widely available. And if you look up the school's name, you can see people from the school or maybe news reports other review. My school personally had a dorm tour, which was really helpful because then you get to see the boarding house from inside and see if you would like to live in that kind of environment. You can see the school grounds and that can just paint a picture in your head. Ask friends. If you've got friends- If you don't have your I have it, I have it, I have it, I have it. That are studying in the country specific to that scholarship, that is likely that they've heard information about it or that they can ask somebody who can give them more information and answer any questions that you have. Next up, me and my mom made a location list. This is gonna tie in with the next point, which is finances. Think not only about the school fee that you're going to have to pay, but think about transportation fee. Transport in the UK is expensive. 2,500 pounds. Fuck off. Seriously. It could be that going to a school that is more secluded is going to cost you more to transport yourself from and to an airport. Another tip is that you can reach out to professionals that help people go abroad and those can help you narrow down the list. Some schools are gender specific, girls only or boys only, so you won't be able to attend if you are not of the gender required. And another thing that is gonna narrow it down is that sometimes schools will offer places only for one set gender. So for example, my school last year, offered places to two boys and the year before it was one girl one boy and then the year before that it was two girls so it does change from year to year just read the requirements that are provided on the pdf so now let's get into the essay writing part of this i am going to give you the structure that i used for my essay which got me in so maybe it is good to use maybe not you can decide first point which is that you're gonna have to address the person of staff that you are appointed to communicate with. For example, if you're communicating with Stuart Little, you will want to start your essay with Dear Mr. Little. Now we're going to get into the general part of the essay. So all these next sections are going to be general and you can copy and paste them between each email. And that is going to make your life so much easier. Introduce yourself. I gave a little bit of background on my age, school that I used to attend, my family life, that I'm an only child, stuff like that, so that they are more familiar with the person that is addressing them. Next up, I address the opportunity that this gives me to show both my personal and academic potential, and then went on to describe my previous academic and personal achievements, language certificates, any Olympias, AP courses, anything specific to me to make myself stand out from the other candidates. In the section where I wrote about what I like to do in my free time, I didn't go into too much deep sports that I do, books that I read. Just be short, be concise, just lay it out there. Let them know that you're a good person in your free time as well. Next up, I addressed why I decided to leave my country and go study in the UK. This can include anything from a better educational system to new opportunities, new challenges, anything that you think is the reason why you went abroad. There's no need to go into too much detail. Blow up my little peak 
over here so that you guys can take example of it. You make it specific to yourself and do not exactly copy and paste what I did. Now we're going to move on to the specific part of the essay. You're going to have to look at each school's website and those other resources such as YouTube and compile all of that. You paint a picture of yourself as the perfect candidate so that they can take you. We don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. Now that does not mean that you're going to have to straight up lie and deceive yourself that you love the school. If you don't love it, you don't have to apply for it. Even if all the recommendations for it are great, make a decision for yourself. You're a grown person now. In each of the essays that I wrote, I started off by mentioning what academic opportunities in the school impress me. That can include anything ranging from the subjects offered, learning centers, support from the teachers, the extended project qualification, which is only offered in some school, great opportunity to extend your research skill, anything that just impresses you and makes the school stand out to you. If you're going to do A-levels, you're going to have to pick more specific subjects. You might hint at the ones that you think you're going to do. That does not mean that it is set in place that you're going to do those four A-levels. If you're doing IBs, do the same. List anything that might interest you that is more specific. Show your particular interest and that is going to be great for them to see because you've taken the time to research the school, you're dedicated and determined in what you want to do. Even if that's not set in stone, it is something that is going to be very impressive to them. Next up, I went on to look at the boarding community that the school offers as well as the day community. Some schools are going to be some percentage of boarders and some percentage of day students, people who commute to the school. Some schools are going to be entirely boarding. All the schools are just going to be different to one another and you have to take that into consideration. My school had a very small boarding community, so it was very tight knit and we were like a big family of 24. And there is the boarding school, which is a big joint community. It might be a co-ed dorm. There is like 300 people. Make sure that you mention that and how that suits you. A smaller scale can mean that you can be more close with the people and you can feel at home, which is going to ease you into the process of moving abroad a bigger scale one might mean that you get to be more sociable and more independent i then went on and looked up the clubs and extracurricular extracurricular and extracurricular that clubs that the school has to offer and show your interest in particular things that might not be offered as subjects but can be useful to you in the future that for me included debate club med club that could have helped me towards my career as well it can be sports as well if you're a sporty person maybe they offer a sport that you used to do in high school so now you can continue that this is your opportunity to also ask questions directly to the school representative any additional fees anything that you didn't see on the website that you're interested in any kind of question that might be useful to you when picking the school at the end because you might get a few offers and you have to pick from those ones can you shut up new york thing <laughs> After that, I am going to read you a sentence that I included in every single one of my applications. And I do believe that it induces confidence in you. And it also shows the people that you're very determined to get into the school is I am confident, underlying confident that I would greatly contribute to the school and boarding environment, or I would be a worthy member of the community. It shows that you're so confident and sure of yourself, but it doesn't sound like you're dismissing their decision. It just gives you a bit of a push over everyone else that you can be the right match for them. In the end, I would conclude each and every single one of my essays with thank you for your time and consideration. Sincerely, my name. After you've written up the essays, maybe draft them, maybe get somebody to check over them just to make sure there's no grammar or spelling mistakes, and then you're ready to send them in. Ooh, this is not! Send in the emails and await your responses. You're gonna get offers and you're gonna have to be quick with this as well because they might make more offers than they've got places available. Your space might be taken by somebody else. So have a priority list. You which school I would go to first, which was my school, then second, and then third, fourth, etc. etc. Now we are going to be name dropping. My list of schools was number one, Chico School, which is the school that I went to. Number two, Dollar Academy in Scotland. Number three, the St. Catherine's Girls School. And number four was Ashford School. I did end up getting into three of my choices. I do believe that my school was the right pick for me. So be confident in your decision. And whatever feels natural is the one you should probably go to. So yeah, this is everything that I have to say to you guys today. Please make sure you subscribe down below. Follow me on all my social media and stuff. Reach out if you've got any questions. Make sure that you let me know how things go. Thanks for tuning in. Bye!